In this video, I'll quickly go over the Advanced Moving Map System, or ABRIS for short. So what we already know is that the PVI-800 and ABRIS are not linked with each other. They might get the same data from the mission editor plans and stuff like that, but once you change something on an ABRIS, you will have to do the same changes on PVI as well to make the, if you want to use the autopilot to fly to that waypoint or that route. If we take a look at the ABRIS, we can see it has five buttons and two rotational knobs, with left rotational knobs being the brightness display, and this one being an axis, which can also be pushed to get an extra function. And if we press the button 5 on the ABRIS, we will switch between the couple of menus. We have the menu, then we have a navigational menu, an arc, uh, digital HSI, and menu again. It doesn't really have a lot of menus, it's, it's really simple, so don't get discouraged. Once you get used to it, you're going to learn how to shuffle between these two menus relatively qu quickly, and uh, it's, there's, not a lot, there's not a lot to learn here. Uh, if we go to menu, on the far left we have options. You can set all different kinds of user settings here that you want. It's not really that important. If we click setup again, we get another drop down menu. You can use these buttons right here to move up or down, or these ones right here. If we go under units tab and press setup again, most people will tell you that you need to change this latitude and longitude uh, from minutes into decimal points. Um, I don't really, I didn't really see the need for this. Uh, they display the same coordinates uh, either way, uh, but I don't know. We can change it. It's up to you. You can you can play around with it and see what you can come up with. Uh, the preferred uh, menu is haven't really touched these before, but this option seems interesting. And root bank 15 degrees. I presume that you if you change this to I don't know a 30 degree, it will it will follow the it will make the autopilot turn at the bank of 30 degrees. It can it can go up to 60 degrees, but I haven't tried it tried it out personally. Have, didn't really see the need to but there's something to play around with in the future and here we see signals uh, it's not really that important and uh, chars but this is so this is somewhat useful if your map it gets too cluttered you can uh, remove some stuff like uh, you can display all the stuff or you can just go down and disable ILS markers etc etc but le let le let's leave that. And uh, from here we can check out the G uh, GNSS, which is basically telling us our satellite coverage and uh, what information, uh, what's the signal uh, strength that we are receiving the information from. Uh, you can also calculate at some other distance or des destination uh, if you're going to plan a long trip and you want to see if you can use your system there. You can calculate if it's going to work or not. And um, uh, you, here we have system test, nothing really important. And let's go back to our menu. Uh, our menu, we can see the SUSP. Uh, this basically switches the waypoints on our ABRIS that we also have in our, our loader flight plan. Uh, or we can press FPL and rotate which waypoint we want to use. If we want to use uh, I don't know, this waypoint, or we want to use this waypoint, or we want to use this waypoint, and so on. Uh, if we go into our, uh, so we're in menu right now, and if you go to nav and click map, we can scale the map here, or we can zoom the map. And as you can see, it's uh, this green lines here, though, though that's our current active waypoint. And uh, if we go back to nav and change our waypoint you will see how they interact with each other so to get to this waypoint it will go through this and this and so on but let's select our first waypoint here okay and let's zoom in a bit Okay, there are a couple of options here that are really, really useful. So let's say we want to find, a, uh, at the moment I have set, I think, uh, four waypoints 
five waypoints, six waypoints. I didn't know I set the six waypoints, must have done something really. Huh. Oh well. I set six waypoints and two. Uh, ah, yes. Now I, now, now I know why. It's reading my current location as a waypoint. Uh, this waypoint right here is my current location since I started from the ground and not from par parking lot. Okay, so now that we solved that confusion, uh, I have made six waypoints and I have a landing waypoint that's uh, on the um, area 51. And if we want to find a second waypoint that we want to go through, uh, we can click uh, within a map right now and we click search and we click airports, it will display all the, all the airports that are available on the map. Since it, this is Nevada, we technically only have four airfields right now. But if we want to say we want to go to McCarran, uh, we click info and we can see the coordinates here. Now, I found a little bug here. I'm not sure if it's in, uh, in the Caucasus map as well. I, I presume it's not, or I'm missing something really obvious here. It tells me the coordinates are 360441, uh, and this is north and west, 116 minus 9 minus 62 east if we go on, on to our f10 map and go to mccarran you will see the coordinates do, do not match so let, as you can see it's 36047 the north should be fine 36044 okay that's a relatively close and if we read the west it's 11508783 while this reads 116 it's off by uh, by one degree here and w if you input this wrongly like if you input 116 you will fly you won't, you won't be flying here you will be flying here and it's really messed up and I, I don't know I don't know if it's just Nevada or Caucasus map I haven't really tried it since I'm mostly flying in Nevada right now uh, but yeah that's something to look out for uh, okay so now that that finished uh, let's go under map again nav and here we see waypoints and then we can select uh, non-directional beacons then we can select waypoints even towns you can search the town by name so if you go like in the list and then name you can rotate it this axis to see if you wanna uh, like uh, find a name so Creech uh, I don't think there is there but yeah, it's a generally nice feature if you're like looking for a specific town and you want to display it on Avis. Okay, now that that's finished, let's go back to our navigation. And uh, if we click flight plan here, it will display our flight plan coordinates and stuff. But let's say we want to ditch this flight plan that we created and make a new one because the old one doesn't, we don't really want to fly there. Uh, we can go to nav and then go to menu. It's, which is this tab right here and press plan this is our flight plan as you can see from uh, it's from Creech to Air for, uh, area 51 if we want to uh, if we press select here we can do we have a lot of options here we can load save unload revise delete add information like uh, you can draw the lines and dots and areas and zones uh, on the Abris, if you wanna, if you know that there's like a danger or a threat there, so it warns you. Uh, let's unload this plan, and if we press here and then right-click it, it will unload it. And in case we want it back, we can just always go back and press revise, and it will bring us uh, bring our old flight plan back. So let's pr press select and unload the unload the flight plan, and if you press draw here we can create new waypoints and we do that by moving this square right here uh, by, by right clicking we switch between X and Z axis so uh, if we move the X axis here and then click it again we move the Y axis and let's say we want to position our waypoint here uh, we position it here and press add and you have the name of the waypoint you can change it if you want it's not really important you have three different kinds of uh, waypoint types. You have flyby, 
then you have oh, um, uh, once you fly over the waypoint, start turning, and you have uh, uh, final so, uh, something like that. But basically, uh, flyby is mean if this is like a waypoint right here, the aircraft will start turning prematurely to match the course. If it's uh, OVR, it will fly through the waypoint, then start turning, and uh, and stuff like that. It's in the manual. It's uh, there are like nice pictures and all that describes it all better than I can with words. But let's leave it at fly, flyby, uh, and all of this is good. So I just press enter, and now we have added our first waypoint. If we click edit again and press insert, we can choose another waypoint. Uh, so let's add it here, and then I don't know. Let's put it number eight. We don't really have to do this, and just uh, press edit, insert, move, move the move the thing again. Press add, enter, edit, insert. Add. And we have just made our flight plan to fly from this point to this point to this point and to this point. And if we press, uh, if we press enter, the, the, we just created our final waypoint. And if we go to plan, we have to select it as an active waypoint now. So let's press, go to number seven and press active. And this just activated our flight plan, and we can go, we can fly with it. But as you can see, uh, if I go into my waypoint uh, and go to flight plan, 363561, 36349, these two don't match. I mean, they're rel relatively close, but they, they don't match. Let's look at the second, let's look at the, I don't know, fourth waypoint. 3652, 3639, it's nowhere, no, nowhere clear. So this is, we still have our old flight plan loaded into a PVI. And in order to change that, we need to input these coordinates. And to do, the, uh, to do that, we can just move this master mods here to edit and select the first waypoint, and we can just edit the coordinates. So if you look at this right here, we can put like uh, 0 since it's north. So 3, 6, 3, 5, 6, and then 1. And remember, it says 1, 1, 6 here in Nevada. In Nevada, it should be 115 because uh, I don't know why it's just offset by one degree. It's kind of confusing. So 115, 329. Press enter and go back to the second waypoint, and then I add it again. Uh, 36410. Then add 1, 115, 273. Enter. And when we add third waypoint, 0, 3, 6, 4, 5, 6, 1, 1, 1, 5, 3, 4, 7. Enter. And the last waypoint, number 4, is 0, 3, 6, 3, 9, 3, 1, 1, 1, 5, 4, 0, 5. And we have just inputted our flight plan into PVI again. So if you look at the coordinates now, they're the same as these ones. 35356 three, and so on and so on. So we can put this back into operational mode. And we can just uh, fly to that waypoint. So if we take off right now. And let's say we select waypoint number 3. And if we go into our map right now and see where the waypoint number number let's go to waypoint number two number two and if we select our heading autopilot it should turn towards that position right now it should turn towards here and as you can see we're currently heading towards the second waypoint and this, that's how you control the Abris and the PVI together. Uh, it's not really anything um, hard. There are a couple of menus that you need to remember, and that's it. Uh, inputting coordinates, uh, and uh, just trial and error, I guess. Uh, once you understand everything, it's, it's relatively easy. And, yeah. So, there. That's it. See you in the next video. Hope you enjoyed it.